Keisha Bader with Shalom TV's News Update. The Anti-Defamation League Wednesday welcomed President Obama's recent executive order to expand Iran sanctions. The order targets companies that help Iran sell its oil, threatening to punish those companies if they help Iran evade sanctions on its oil sales through transactions in gold or cash. ADL National Chair Robert Sugarman and National Director Abe Foxman said compelling Iran to negotiate a verifiable end to their nuclear weapons program is the goal of the sanctions. If that result is not achieved soon with these new measures, the President and Congress will need to act quickly to adopt sanctions that are more than incremental, crippling sanctions that are truly game changers. And in a related story, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie announced new legislation he signed into law prohibiting public contracts with any company or person that invests in Iran's energy and finance sectors. Christie made the announcement at a gala Tuesday celebrating the newly merged Jewish Federation of Greater Metro West New Jersey. The state Senate and Assembly had approved the bill in June with support from both sides of the aisle. Executive Vice President and CEO of the Greater Metro West Federation, Max Kleinman, had testified before the Assembly supporting the legislation. In July of 2010, President Obama signed a law that gives states and local governments the authority to prevent contracting with companies that do business in Iran. The U.S. House of Representatives is considering a bill that would count the plight of Jewish refugees alongside that of Palestinian refugees. A bipartisan group of six members of Congress is sponsoring the bill that would ensure the recognition of 850,000 Jewish refugees displaced from Arab countries since Israel's War of Independence in 1948. The legislation specifically calls on the Obama administration to pair any explicit reference to Palestinian refugees with a similar reference to Jewish or other refugee populations. Democratic Representative Jared Nadler, the lead sponsor of the bill, said it is simply wrong to recognize the rights of Palestinian refugees without recognizing the rights of nearly one million Jewish refugees who suffered terrible outrages, outrages rather, at the hands of their former compatriots. B'nai B'rith International played a key role in the introduction of the bill. Its International Director of Legislative Affairs, Eric Fussfield, said the organization wanted to make sure that the U.S. makes the rights of Jewish refugees from Arab nations part of the conversation when it comes to the Middle East conflict, saying any time refugee issues are discussed in the context of the peace negotiations, the rights of Jewish refugees need to be given their proper place. Co-sponsors of the bill included Representatives Howard Berman, Joe Crowley, Bob Turner, Ted Poe, and Ileana ross Lettinen. At a congressional hearing yesterday addressing the fate of jailed Jewish-American businessman Jacob Ostreicher, Representative Chris Smith introduced legislation in an effort to help Ostreicher and others like him. The new legislation would hold foreign officials who violate due process and human rights of imprisoned Americans accountable and not allow them or their family members to travel to the U.S. The new bill called Justice for Imprisoned Americans Overseas Act, or Jacob's Law, will be presented on Friday. Ostreicher has been held in a Bolivian jail since June of last year without any formal charges being filed against him and has been on a hunger strike for several months. In response to a television ad placed by the Emergency Committee for Israel, also known as the ECI, which suggests that Mitt Romney would be more publicly supportive of Jerusalem's being the capital of Israel then is the Obama administration, the National Jewish Democratic Council said that the ECI has exposed itself as a partisan Republican organization. Actually, while the ECI doesn't indicate that it is aligned with the Republican Party in its television ads, it's clear to anyone visiting the ECI website that it is a wholly Republican organization with Bill Kristol as its founding chairman and with board member Gary Bauer. When reached by Shalom TV for comment, executive director of the ECI, Noah Pollack, responded, the National Jewish Democratic Council is panicked, pure and simple. And finally, Jerusalem's Hebrew University has been ranked as the second best place to work in academia outside of the United States and ninth worldwide. 
The university was the only Israeli school in the top 25 of the Scientist magazine's 10th annual Best Places to Work in Academia list, which surveys more than 1,000 researchers in life sciences. Finishing ahead of Hebrew U in the outside of the U.S. rankings was the Research Center for Molecular Medicine of the Austrian Academy of Sciences in Vienna. The J. David Gladstone Institutes in San Francisco was ranked first overall. And that's Shalom TV's news update. I'm Tisha Bader.